we're going to talk about all N. And we're going to talk about it in a kind of a interesting format because I want to recall a movie. I'd love to tell you the name of the movie, but I don't recall the movie title itself. But a long time ago, I really recall watching this movie, and, and it was a bunch of Viking warships attacking another nation and these big wooden ships. And it was a fleet of these big wooden ships, and their soldiers were on the ships attacking the nation. They all beached properly, and the troops are offloading the ships. And the general first statement out of his out of his mouth, the first command he gave was to burn the ship, okay. set set the ships on fire. And and one of his people said, "Well, why are we burning the ships? They're they're good. What if we get in and we need to retreat? We'll have no way to retreat. It'll be the ocean." that there is no retreat. We take this nation or die. Now, I want to tell you that this is an excellent example of what today's call is. That's all in. There's no other way to, to look at that, right? You're all in when you say, take the nation or we die. That's a good motivator, isn't it? Now, in today's environment, obviously, we're not going to say to our crew at the dealership, we take this month and make it stellar or everybody's dead. But what we can do is, is look at this with a little bit of detail and, and see how we measure our staff and we look at our staff. To be a success in any company, my feeling is you need a staff that's all in. And in my vision of this, well, you might ask, well, what is that in, in today's environment, today's car dealerships or any business USA? What is that, number one, willing to change? One thing you can say in this, in this environment, car business, hey, it's going to change. It's constantly in motion. You look at the the regulations, the different functions on warranty and dealing with cash customers and internals and all of this. It is changing. The, the technology of the vehicles, the requirements of training, all of this intensifying the need to have this willingness to change. I also think the staff has got to have a desire to grow and to be the best. If you're looking at your staff and they're not, they don't have that desire, and you know it, if you look at each individual and your staff, do they have the desire to grow and be the best? And the third requirement I think that you need for all in, an all in staff, is attitude. Right now, things can go wrong and things can go right in anybody's life. It's how we respond to these things that's the difference maker. And that comes down to the attitude of the individual. I know people that and I consider myself among these, that when you get knocked down, you get back up, you dust your butt off, and you say, let's go at this again. You don't get up and say, poor me, get in the corner and have a pity party. So the attitude is such that regardless of the situation, regardless of what happens, you pull yourself up and say, I will overcome this. Those three things are required in all in. Now let's start with yourself and a little bit of uh, self-analysis and, and 
ask yourself these questions. Do you say often, I don't get paid enough to do that? How about this one? I can't do that here. Or even worse, I won't do that here. If you're asking yourself or if you're saying these things often, you're not all in. And I, I really believe strongly that to get the ultimate result in anything we set out to accomplish, we have to be all in. You can't put the toe in the water. One of the things that, that uh, I love to do is boating. And up on Lake Erie, those waters sometimes are a little bit different than the, the air temperature. Now, this long weekend, I, I promise you, I have some, hopefully, some times where I'm on the lake boating and it's very hot and I am going to go into the water to cool off. Now, there's a couple approaches to going in and cooling off in the water. You can put your toe in, gradually step down the ladder, and go, whoo, boy, that's chilly. Or you can be my my technique, which is you get on the back of the boat and you dive in. And you know what? When you dive in, it may be an instant chill, but that is brief and it's not long. And what happens with that, then your body adjusts to the temperature. That's the approach we need for our companies. That's the approach we need for our jobs. Be all in. Go for it. Test the waters. Get used to the changes you have to make. But don't hesitate to implement them. If you know you've got a policy or a procedure that will better the company and you believe it will, do it. Don't hesitate. You can always adjust amend, go in and, and even change direction. But if you're going to even try anything, it has to be all in. And that includes including the staff in those decisions. If your staff is asking these questions, what about your coworkers? Are they saying these things? A successful team has a desire to win and be the best. There's never a question they want to win. The second thing they, that a team has, a successful team has, is a desire to lead their market. If, if, you're, if they don't go, if your team doesn't go into each day wanting to get the most out of it as a team, it's going to be a real challenge to overcome the obstacles that's facing every dealership in the United States and, and abroad. The, we all have that common thing where we have to do better than our competition. We have to be different than our competition. And today's successful team has to have a willingness to learn. When I started in this business, Many years ago, gosh, I was 19 when I started in, in the uh, management function of a parts business. But one thing that I, I think always was helpful was a willingness to learn. Did I know it all? Not in the slightest. But I, I will say this. I was always going into every day, what am I going to learn today? And the fact is, after 11 years of consulting, I enter today with that same approach. What can I pick up? What can I learn? How can I adjust what I'm doing a little bit to be better? And this willingness to learn never stops. Regardless of your position in the dealership, the structure of the company, the willingness to learn never stops. What are the... the vehicles, how are they working, 
when a customer brings a vehicle into your shop, do your advisors know what is going on with that? What are the bulletins out there? Is a customer describing a service bulletin that if they knew it would save that vehicle from coming in and getting a poor CSI report? I've had many times that I've read bulletins where the customers come in and, and regardless of not pointing blame at anybody, but there may be a new vehicle, their old vehicle did it this way, the new vehicle doesn't. It's not designed to operate the way that they thought it was. So they believed they had a problem with the car. If your staff has a desire to learn to be the best, wouldn't we be reading these? Wouldn't we be sharing them with technicians? Wouldn't we, we be looking for ways to be above the competition? Well, that's a quick one because I'll tell you what, it's uncommon that people study these. And if the sales department didn't take the time to show the, the new owner that vehicle, or even if the salesperson, when they delivered it, didn't know themselves how it worked, do you see how that could be a problem for service, to just write the repair order and bring it in and not even have an issue? Today's dealership leadership must develop the staff to always be all in. How can we do that? Well, like this leader, burn the ships. When you taken over a nation. We need to communicate. We need to have open lines that include maybe a weekly meeting. Some some people have gone to a daily meeting. Personally, I favor a weekly meeting where we discuss goals, opportunities for growth, and develop the team to be all in to have the attitude we need, the desire to grow and be the best, the willingness to change. And really, every time anyone in, in leadership or in the team hears comments like, I can't do that here, I won't do that here, I don't get paid enough to do that, Understand the attitude of one affects the many. The attitude of one affects the many. I challenge everyone on the call to not allow it, to address it, and develop this kind of a team that's all in. All right, Mike, let's open it up for some comments. If anyone would like a comment, you can raise your hand. Mike will see that. If you press the number one, it will raise your hand and Mike can acknowledge you. Or what we're going to do today, Mike, is uh, just open the lines up and take a quick history from anyone. Please don't be shy and be willing to participate. Mike, go ahead and open the lines. Okay, the lines are completely open. Does anyone have a comment about their team or the challenges that that they're facing on getting this all in? Or you might have a success story to share where your team is all in and doing well. How long do you like to give an employee to commit to all in? You know, that's a good question, and and, uh, and unfortunately it varies. The ones that I see the, the largest trouble with are the uh, employees that consider themselves tenured, that, that uh, gosh, I've been here for 15 years and the employer hasn't done anything to me yet, so I can really illustrate whatever attitude I want to. But if it's a relatively new employee and 
And I, I would say if it's under three year employee and they're consistently illustrating what I'm talking about in this, that they don't have the all in approach, then I think that should be a decision time. And that, that should be a discussion with that individual saying, asking flat out, here's what we require and here's where you're short. How are we going to deal with it? Because it could be they, they're in the wrong job. And if someone's in the wrong job and they're not happy every day, it's just a cancer for the team. It can't be tolerated, really. It shouldn't be, regardless of how many years. If someone's been there 15 years and they hate their job, it, it could be the best thing for both parties that they move on in a different direction and uh, find something they like. Wouldn't you agree with that? Definitely. Uh, just the, the time frame always becomes a question for me. You know, you, you see good things and then you see bad things, and sometimes you, you're you torn between is it time to give up yet or isn't it? Well, if you're torn between it's time to give up or isn't it, I, I strongly would recommend including the individual in that in that discussion. That's fair. That's a fair discussion to have, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. And then, then there's no place to hide. Sometimes things come out in these these types of conversations that uh, give give them the opportunity to address their concerns and. And sometimes that comes out a winning conversation for everybody. So don't keep it a secret. Keep talking. Great question. Communication, I think, is the ultimate. And there's a lot of it that's lacking in today today's environment. Anybody else? All right, everybody, thanks for the time today, and uh, we'll see you next week. Have a great holiday weekend. Bye-bye for now. Fixed performance helps many dealerships improve their fixed operations. With our no-nonsense approach, we don't beat down your staff. Instead, we encourage them. To, to do the right processes, treat the customers fairly, and retain them. So if you're looking to improve customer satisfaction, customer retention, and profits, we're a good fit for your dealership. Give us a call and let's chat.